Hey there Wargamers, Justin here from Amp Services, and for this week's Tactical Tuesday video, we're going to be discussing the Tau Hazard Suits. There are a few things that draw me into the Hazard Suits, but let's talk about the weapons first. They come standard with two twin-linked burst cannons. Now that's pretty brutal. Each Hazard Suit being able to fire eight shots that are twin-linked is fantastic. In addition to the burst cannons, however, they have access to three other weapons the phased ion gun, the fusion cascade, and the pulse submunition rifle. The fusion ion gun, if you choose to upgrade to this weapon on your hazard suits, is 10 points apiece. It's a range 18 weapon, strength 4, AP 4, assault 4, and it has the ringing special rule. Now in previous editions, I like to run this over the burst cannons, because in previous editions the burst cannons were only 3 shots rather than 4, and this has rending. So, you have a chance at actually killing Terminators with it, and because these guys get up close and personal, that seemed like a good idea. But with the recent change, I believe it was in 6th edition for Tau, them upping the burst cannons to 4 shots apiece rather than 3, and at a strength 5 of 8 and AP 5, the face ion guns just weren't quite as effective, and adding them onto the models made them a little bit more expensive. The second weapon option that you could choose for the hazard suits is the Fusion Cascades. These clock in at 15 points apiece, they have a range of 12, their strength 6 and AP 1, assault D3, and melt up. Now these are pretty, pretty awesome. You could use them to hunt down terminators, hunt down anything with a, uh, a relatively good armor value, and or shoot at vehicles. My only concern with these in regards to taking out vehicles is that their strength 6 rather than 8, which is what a traditional melt shot would be. But you could still take out light vehicles with ease, and if you run up against maybe a land raider, it may be a little bit more tough to get through, but that's, that's not a bad weapon. The major issue I have with this weapon, and like the phased ion gun, is that if you're going to outfit your hazard suit with two of these, you're looking at increasing the model by 30 points. These guys aren't that resilient, and increasing the model's cost by 30 points before you even look at their support systems is brutal. The final weapon option that the hazard suits have at their disposal is the pulse submunition rifle. Now this one clocks in at 20 points per weapon and they can take two. So that's that's pretty hefty. You know if you want to do equip two of these you're increasing the model's cost by 40 points at that point and that's that's no joke. But this particular weapon has a range of 24 so it outranges all of the previous weapon options. It has a strength of 5 and AP of 6 so it's on par with the burst cannon for strength but the AP is worse. It's assault one large blast and ignores cover. So this is great if you're going to go hunt down let's say scouts or, or light infantry, things like that. It's a great weapon. The problem that I have with it is, and like the rest of the Tau army, is you have plenty of anti-infantry weapons. Do you really need this one? And at 20 points apiece, is it really going to be effective? Could be, you know, or it could just make these guys a bigger target. The hazard suit's base cost is 75 points. So when you're looking at using the Pulse Submunition Rifle, Fusion Cascades, or the Phased Ion Guns, you really have to consider how many points do you want to invest in this model. Additionally, like the other suits in the Tau Army, you have to really also consider what is the primary role for your hazard suits. And that's going to lead me into my next point, and I'm going to discuss what I actually do with the hazard suits. So the first role that I have for my hazard suits is being a close support, tanky style of unit. They clock in at 75 points base, and again, they also have the two link burst cannons that they come with. Rather than outfit them with a whole bunch of expensive gear, I generally leave them stock, and I choose to use the stimulant injector upgrade. Now this is a little bit more expensive for them than it is for a traditional crisis suit, but it clocks in at 25 points for the stimulant injectors, and makes their overall cost 100 points even for a two wound model with five toughness. Now the fact that they have a 5 toughness makes them immune to most forms of instant death. Let's say a power fist, a thunder hammer, um, or a melt -a gun maybe. It's not going to prevent them from going down to a force weapon, weapons that also explicitly state instant death, or a towel rail gun. What this does do however is make them very resilient to small arms fire. Stimulant injectors grants them feel no pain, they have a 3 up armor shape which is relatively good, but the key point here is that 5 toughness. Again. They're immune to most forms of instant death, they're relatively hard to wound for most basic light weapons, and they're just extremely resilient. Let's also not forget the fact that they do come with two twin link burst cannons per model. Two, so eight shots at ballistic skill three twin linked. That means they're probably gonna hit with a, a huge amount of their shots. 
Add to that that the Tau army has other synergetic effects that could increase their odds of hitting, and these guys are really effective at what they do. Now that leads me into the second role, and possibly might even actually be the primary role I have for my hazard suits, I might actually reverse them, but this role is the role of a bodyguard for a crisis suit commander. I like to run the Iridium Armor upgrade on my Crisis Suit Commander, which increases his toughness to a 5, gives him a 2 up armor save, and I also run Simulant Injectors on him as well. So very similar outfitting for my Crisis Suit Commander and my Hazard Suits. But by attaching the Hazard Suits to my Commander and making them a quasi bodyguard unit, I've increased the survivability of the whole unit. The fact that he has two models with him that are toughness 5 and have reasonably good close range weapons, which is what mine's outfitted with. It just increases his survivability as a whole and really drives home a kind of ranged Death Star style of unit. If your Crisis Suit Commander was outfitted with the Multi-Spectrum Sensor Sweep, this might also synergize really well with the Hazard Suits because he can forego his shooting attacks to grant them the Ignores Cover Special Rule. This is really awesome with the Burst Cannons in particular because they're twin linked already, you're probably going to hit with a bunch of them, and you can just shred right into some type of, you know, maybe a, a scout unit or Eldar Rangers, things like that, who already have a really bad standard armor save. So AP5 is probably going to go through, and the fact you're ignoring cover just basically means dead models. Much like the rest of the Tau army, Hazard Suit's one glaring weakness is the assault phase. They don't want to be locked in combat. Now while they are a resilient unit, if they are locked in the assault phase, that's just future turns where they're possibly not shooting and making use of the ranged weapons you've given them, or they might outright just die. To help them survive, however, these suits are outfitted with a couple of melee-oriented upgrades to help them out. The first defensive upgrade that the hazard suits come stocked with is the photon casters. This essentially means that the hazard suits are treated as having defensive grenades, which is really great because when a model assaults them, the defensive grenades denies them the plus one attack that they get on the charge. The second defensive upgrade that the Hazard Suits come stock with is the Vectored Retro Thrusters. Now this grants them two special rules, Hit and Run and Fleet. If you're in a position where you want to forego your shooting to run because you want to get some distance away from maybe some type of model that's run in on you or you want to get cover, the Fleet's going to help you because you get to reroll this. Add in the fact that you also get your jetpack move during the assault phase and these guys can really book it across the field. Now, they also have hit and run, so if you're locked in an assault and you manage to survive, you have that chance to possibly disengage and bounce out, and then return fire during your turn, or during the preceding shooting phase. And that's really awesome, because a lot of the Tau models, once they're in melee, they're pretty much doomed. So the hazard suits have that one little bit of saving grace, assuming that they do survive the assault phase. Now, big surprise here guys, if you watched my other Tau videos, you knew this was coming. We're going to talk about the Pathfinders as well. Now we've discussed all the other aspects of the hazard suits that I think are pertinent, but the one thing that really is going to make them shine, you know, even more so than they already do, is utilizing those pathfinders. Maybe you need to take out cover on a model or a unit that the hazard suits are shooting at, boom, your, your pathfinders can really help with that. More importantly, if you're rocking the standard burst cannon loadout, even just one marker light from a pathfinder unit, upping your ballistic skill to a 4, given the fact you have twin linked, is absolutely ridiculous. Having a 66.67% chance and re-rolling is awesome. I cannot emphasize enough how much marker lights, whether it is from Pathfinders or drones, are really going to help your hazard suit shine. Now finally, this isn't about Pathfinders right here, but I didn't mention the fact that hazard suits also have access to drones. I don't particularly take those because it upsets the average toughness of the unit and I don't want to make my hazard suits easy to take out because they brought a bunch of drones with them but if you're savvy with your drone purchases and really want to bring them with you you can bring enough so that you have them but don't upset the average toughness and you could actually use them as extra fodder to die or you could actually bring them in as extra guns if you're running like a buff commander and you want those drones to also benefit. Well guys I hope you found this hazard suit discussion enlightening today if something I said seemed awesome or was a good idea and you want to use it, let me know how it went for you. If I missed some aspect about the hazard suits that you would like to bring up, also mention that below. Let's get a cool discussion going. As always though, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. I'd really like the support and help keep these videos going. Additionally, if you haven't given us a like on Facebook, check us out there too to be able to stay up to date with all of our current commissions and our promotions. 
Finally, all of the towel models you saw in this video were painted by me, and that's what I do for a living, so if you'd like to have me paint some awesome models for you, click quote request now. Thanks for watching guys, and as always, happy wargaming.